Hey, what's up? I made it to CES 2023 and there's so much amazing tech that I can't wait to show you. We have a lot to see, so sit back, relax, and let's check it out. Robot lawnmowers are kind of getting crazy, and this one from EcoFlow really stood out. You can actually attach a bag on the back to sweep or collect leaves in your yard. Imagine driving through your neighborhood and seeing this thing doing yard work. It has an app so you can control it and set virtual boundaries, plus some sensors in the front to avoid obstacles. It even has 4G and an eSIM built in if it gets out of Wi-Fi range. Mowing the lawn could actually be fun with the EcoFlow blade. I mean, a robot chopping things with a blade in front of your house? What could go wrong? So, you've heard of smoke detectors, but what about fire detectors? This new product immediately detects a small flame, then notifies you with a push notification and an alarm beeping. They say this is perfect for a kid's room, so if you have a pyromaniac who plays with matches, well, you should probably hide those matches and then get this. This surprised me and is one of my favorite things from CES. It's just so fast and accurate. But what about the kitchen? Well, the Pro version has a PIR and radar sensor built in to detect if someone is in the room. Then it can alert you if you left your gas stove on and no one is in the room anymore. Pretty sweet. Ring's new car cam actually has two cameras, one looking inside and one facing forward. There is a privacy shutter to block the inside camera that will mute the microphone. But if we had this, it would settle a lot of debates about which kid hit first. It starts recording from motion if you're not in the car, or tell it to record with a voice command and it will save up to 20 minutes, which is perfect if the police pull you over. There's no SD card and you'll need Ring subscription if you want to watch and save clips when you're out and about. Otherwise, it will upload the clips later when you connect to Wi-Fi at home, so you don't need a subscription to record videos. In person, this thing is kind of tall and I'm worried it would block my view, but if you can see past that, it's a cool little camera. It wouldn't be CES without some strange VR that makes you question the future of humanity. I almost felt out of place walking around CES with just my normal eyes. This headset called MewTalk is a soundproof Bluetooth microphone. It's designed to muffle your screams, and I wish this was a joke, but this is really what it's for. Since gaming and the metaverse can apparently get intense, this stops you from annoying people stuck in reality. Just don't get hurt in real life because no one will hear your cries for help. Really though, I could barely hear any noise coming from the shouting person demoing this. No! <laughs> but I still can't get past how strange it looks. Nanoleaf announced Nala at CES. No, not her. It stands for Nanoleaf Automation's Learning Assistant. Basically, it learns your routines, then automates your lights. If you always dim the lights or change the colors at a certain time, eventually it will do it for you. Nala is a feature in Nanoleaf's new Sense Plus switches. These switches also have a motion sensor and ambient light sensor built in, which they hid pretty well. The thing that literally sticks out the most is the scroll wheel to dim the lights. It's definitely easy to use, but only if you can get your spouse on board with the design. LG's booth is always intense. They had this expanded screen experience that was trippy and made me feel dizzy. Too real, LG, take it easy. Plus, of course, TVs galore, with one in particular standing out as the world's first wireless OLED TV. Well, it still has a plug for power, but the signal is beamed wirelessly to the TV from this little box, which you can plug your HDMI devices and all of that into. The image transmitted and displayed on the 97-inch OLED TV is incredible. I could see this wireless TV being useful somewhere like above a fireplace where only an outlet is available. Mosquitoes love me, so I knew I had to try out this next device. It's called Heat It, and you attach it to your keys. When you get bit, you plug it into your phone's charging port, either lightning or USB-C, then it uses your phone's power instead of batteries to zap your skin with some intense heat. And it was seriously hot, like 124 degrees. This might initially hurt worse in a bug bite, but apparently it works. The heat stops the bite from forming into an itchy spot that will bother you for days. And I'll take a quick zap over a constant itch. We've seen concepts of devices being powered or charged across the room at CES before, but 
Will that technology ever see the light of day? Actually, yes, and pun intended since this uses light to power devices. So this Alfred Smart Lock is staying fully charged by that transmitter across the room. How cool is that? This lock is actually coming out this year and the wireless transmitter charging kit should hopefully be available soon. It's safe because it's just infrared light and it's FDA approved. They showed a lot of things it could charge and I'm excited for the future. The company that brought us last year's robotic tail and biting cat toy is at it again. Their new robotic pillow compresses and expands to help calm you. In other words, it feels like the pillow is breathing. Weird. I tried it and it's kind of heavy, but maybe it could work like a weighted blanket. I don't know, but if it keeps my wife or any of my three daughters calm, then take my money now. Of course, CES is filled with crazy looking cars all over the place, but there were a few that took that craziness to a whole new level. Volkswagen is announcing their new electric car, the ID7, and they claim it can go over 400 miles per charge. And to promote it, they wrapped it in 40 layers of special paint that can light up. Completely ridiculous, but it puts on quite the show. BMW stepped up their game from last year's black and white to actual colors this year. This thing was mesmerizing to look at. This would solve so many issues in people's lives, like agreeing on a car color with your spouse, confusing law enforcement if they're trying to identify your car. Wait, no, uh, move it on. Sometimes renters can get overlooked in the smart home market, so I really like this new FlexTouch Pro. It's a retrofit option that attaches to your existing deadbolt to make it smart. By adding this to your door, you can unlock it using your fingerprint, voice control, or the app. Lockley also had a smart fingerprint safe. You can use the app to monitor it, control how it's accessed, and receive tamper notifications. This has a really cool safety feature. If you register a different fingerprint that you wouldn't normally use, scanning that finger would call the police and notify loved ones that you're in danger. This next company gets me excited about the future of AI and security cameras. Their cameras can identify if a fight is starting and alert you. Someone from their booth was trying to pick a fight with me and it noticed it right away. Then watch this, bam, another guy randomly fell over. I can think of some NBA teams who would hire this guy for some excellent flopping going on. But the software can recognize falls too and all this was very fast and accurate. It's designed for commercial use right now and it's already being used in malls and sports complexes in Japan. But this gives me hope that our doorbells and home security cameras can someday have AI be on person, pet, and package detection. You couldn't walk around CES without seeing the Matter logo plastered everywhere. Matter, Matter, Matter! So many companies announcing Matter compatible devices, like Dovey's M1 Lightstrip coming out this year. Also, the SwitchBot Hub 2 that has a little display and some buttons you can press. The Homey Pro Hub that's coming to the US this year. TP-Link had some new Casa switches that will work with Matter, and a Topo Matter controller. Yeelight also had some pretty cool looking cube lights that will also work with Matter. But probably the most legit out of all these companies when it comes to Matter is Eve. They have been making thread devices for years and many of them are getting a firmware update to work with Matter. Eve showed how they could control a light with all the systems using Matter here at CES. They also showed off their new motion blinds that make existing roller blinds smart by adapting to the size. It has a built-in battery that's supposed to last about a year and it recharges with USB-C. It uses thread and you guessed it, it will work with matter in the future. CES wouldn't be CES without appliances that have ridiculous features that you don't need, but they made them anyways. Samsung's new bespoke oven has a really clean, modern look and inside is a camera. That's right, it can take time lapses of your food cooking and upload it straight to social media, aka the influencer camera to get all of those TikTok views. Samsung also had some updates to their bespoke four-door flex fridge. They increased the screen size to 32 inches and it looks great taking up almost the entire panel. You can also display pictures of your family on it or pictures of you and a random guy at CES. If you wanna shake things up and change the color, you'll need to use a suction cup to remove the panel. So LG has entered the chat. 
I've said it in the past that you can't have too much RGB, but LG is really testing me here. They put RGB light up panels on the front of their fridge. You can change the color, sync it to music, or have it flash if the door is left open. Just when I thought CES couldn't announce any more unnecessary products, Lenovo goes and announces a dual screen laptop and totally redeems itself. Seriously though, the Yogabook 9i is a dual OLED screen laptop and it's amazing. You can use it in so many different configurations, like when you put a magnetic keyboard on it, part of the screen becomes a trackpad that works really well. This would be great to travel with and folds up so slim with a case that doubles as a stand. I love that the camera is near eye level in the dual screen mode for video calls and I want this thing. If you wish you had some data on your urine, just pee on the new Withings device. It's called U-Scan, and there are test strips inside that you can swap out. Uh, yeah, maybe wear gloves. But this can reveal a lot about your health. You can test for hormones, pH levels, hydration, vitamin C, and even kidney stones that are coming. Yikes. But do I want Withings to know all of this data too? Eh. They say they can tell the difference between people from their stream ID, but this seems difficult to hit if you pee standing up. And even if you hit it, won't it just splatter everywhere? So many questions. Samsung surprised me with a few smart home updates. One is a new SmartThings station, and this is a SmartThings hub that will support matter out of the box. But what makes this stand out is the wireless charger on top and a smart button on the corner. So you can press a button right on your hub to control the lights. If you have multiple of these around your house, you will increase your thread mesh system with more border routers. Plus you'll have an extra wireless charger and a smart button too. I like that they're getting creative with the hubs. Samsung also announced that their TVs will support Hue Sync. So if you have Philips Hue smart lights, you can sync them to a Samsung TV without needing a Hue Sync box. Sweet. CES had more than just electric cars this year. They had inline skates that are powered by an electric motor and even an electric boat. What? The C8 is a hydrofoil boat, so it skims across the water almost like it's floating, and this thing looks pretty sick. It has tons of tech in it with sensors and accelerometers to balance the boat and drive autonomously on a set course. Even if you don't have the $390,000 for this boat, it's paving the way for more electric boats in the future. Next is the GE Profile. My wife who bakes sent me to CES to check this out and now I want one for myself. It's a stand mixer similar to a KitchenAid but really smart. This can detect how thick the batter is and even monitor for changes in texture. Then it will adjust the speed for perfect mixing, which is impressive. This also has a built-in scale to measure ingredients and a timer so it can stop mixing on its own. It looks high quality and intuitive to use, plus the app gives me hope that I could actually bake something. Roborock announced the S8 Pro Ultra with a lot of minor but really good updates over the previous gen. It has dual brushes now that kind of help clean themselves, two sonic vibration sections for even better mopping, the suction power has been increased, and the vacuum roller section can lift up and turn off during mopping if you want it to be silent while it mops. Plus the dock has a drying system built in to prevent mold. There was also another robot vacuum that caught my eye, the TP-Link Topo Slim Vac with LiDAR. When TP-Link was telling me this had LiDAR, I actually didn't believe them because it doesn't have that little spinning thing on top like every other LiDAR robot vacuum. They were like, uh, yeah, that's why it's called the Slim Vac with LiDAR. Oh, well, that makes sense. So if you want a LiDAR mapping vacuum with low height clearance to fit under furniture, this might be it. Kohler was showing off a few things, including their stillness bath for the first time in person. Dang, this thing looks good. They also had these crazy shower heads like this one that slows down the pressurized water and lets gravity control the speed to feel like rain. Will it actually wash soap off you? Yeah, that's up for debate. They did have the Sprig shower attachment that lets you add aromatherapy smells to your shower. Pick a scent, drop it in, and you're basically in a spa. CES was so much fun this year and I love seeing all the crazy tech.